Hello, hello. How is everybody doing tonight? I know it's been a while. I'm so happy to be back doing this show. Um, yeah, how are you guys doing? I see we already got a, a few people in the chat. I uh, just want to say hi. Say hi right off the bat. Uh, Solo X, hey, the man, the man that helped us do music. Do music for the Sawyer Massacre. And not just that, constructed the basement that we filmed all the murder stuff. At Solo X, it's Justin Lowley of, of Solo X, and uh, thank you for for uh, for saying hi. I think you did that earlier. I think I, I'm not sure if he's actually in the chat now because it shows earlier. Same with Peter Anthony. Can't wait. I think that was earlier as well. I'm sure Peter will be here at some point because Peter is an awesome, awesome guy. If you guys don't follow Peter Anthony, you should follow Peter Anthony. And there's our good friend Michelle Blasky in the chat as well. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Um, third channel's coming out October. I'm going to mess this up. You may as well just say it in the chat. I don't want to say, I don't want to say the wrong date again. October something. <laughs> Everybody, Jared, Leppy Laddie. Hey, you're not the Drayton Sawyer anymore though. What happened? You went back to Leppy Laddie like you are on Instagram. It's all good. It's all good. He's a big, uh, he, he, he's a big leprechaun fan. At least the first one. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about the sequels and whatnot. Some of them, yeah. It's been a while though. <laughs> uh, DC and Marvel Boy. Hey, I don't. I don't know if we've had you in the chat before. Maybe we have. I get. I. I never know. But if you're new here, uh, hit that like button. Yeah, if all all of you hit the like button if you can, uh, or the dislike button. You can hate me if you want to. <laughs> it all helps the algorithm. And Apex. Hello, Steve. Is that Clifton? Uh, I know your uh, Cl Clifton's name is Apex on uh, on uh, Instagram. So if it is Clifton, just let me know if it's you. Uh, Clifton Taylor is uh, a, a recent associate producer uh, on on our new film. So. I would like to acknowledge that. It is Clifton. Hey, Clifton. <laughs> How are you doing? Thanks for tuning in tonight. Change my name, uh, says Jared. Third channel, October 23rd. I was going to say 24th. I was going to be off by one day. I was still would have been off. doesn't matter how off you are. If you're off, you're off. <laughs> That's what it boils down to, right? So I may as well not say anything. It's going to be kind of a fun night, guys. I, I haven't done this for a while. I, I know I haven't been doing this show as often. I've been swamped. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with um, my, my youngest. My youngest is, uh, you know, he's at an age where he's creeping up to being two, and he wants to do so much, and I just he takes so much of my time. Uh, so, you know, getting to do stuff as often as I want to, like this show. I know I used to do this once a week. Um, sometimes even twice a week, I think I used to do this and now it's like once a month. So I apologize. I'm trying my darndest guys. You know, I want to do the, this, this show more often. I really do. Uh, just, you know, uh, life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, plus of course we're raising money for an, another, uh, film and, uh, some of you have already supported. Thank you to everybody who has supported, by the way, we are doing a double giveaway tonight. Just so you guys know, uh, we're going to do that after the ranking. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, spend all night doing my ranking. I'm going to try to be a little bit quick, uh, but, but uh, you know, I'll do my ranking. I uh, got some shout-outs before I even get to that, though. Always got shout-outs I like to do. Um, I recently I recently went through Michelle uh, Apollonia's Facebook page, and I guess she was in a car accident. You know, somebody had mentioned something to me, but I, I guess she was in a car accident. It sounds like she's okay, but she's not... 100%. I don't know when she was, but uh, she is the one that has Breathless Beauties. I need to reach out to Michelle because uh, she really is a wonderful person. I miss having her, seeing her in the chat. But it sounds like uh, she doesn't uh, come to a lot of these anymore because she has a hard time looking at the computer screen ever, ever since her accident. But she does these custom horror-themed dolls. And I just love it. Hey, there's our buddy Leatherface, <laughs> you know? And here's our other buddy, Brett, uh, Brett, the Brett man from uh, Good Real Hunting. Uh, so if you guys haven't subscribed to to his to their channel, Good Real Hunting, that's uh, Brett man. He's a big Scream fan, and yeah, she'll customize any doll for you. Free shipping within the U.S. She's out of, based out of Syracuse, New York, 
and just a wonderful, wonderful person. I was on her podcast once. That was a lot of fun. Uh, just, just an amazing, ma- an amazing, amazing person. I really hope that uh, that I will uh, get to communicate with her again real soon. I know it's, uh, it's, uh, she's gone through a bit of a tough time. So um, I hope she's okay with me telling <laughs> telling the world she was in a car. But she announced it on social media. I just, I just found out recently. And uh, we've got our other Michelle who's in the chat tonight, Michelle Blasky. Uh, she does this really cool artwork. And we've got all the links to the, these things are in the d- description, guys. Michelle Gra- Blasky is on uh, Redbubble, and she's got re- this really cool, obscure art that I th- that I really dig. I really dig. And she's got it on Redbubble, so you can go check that out as well. And we mentioned also, too, the third channel is coming out. I'm a producer on it. Uh, make sure you go... Uh, Go give her support, her your support when it uh, releases on October twenty third. Uh, I can't wait to, I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see. It. I know it's going to be awesome. Uh, even though I, even though you shot it on a very low budget, uh, extremely low budget. I don't know how you did it, uh, but you did. And uh, you know, it's it's going to be exciting to uh, to see how it comes out. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be or anything like that, but. Uh, Maybe Michelle has a little bit of insight into that, but uh, you don't have to tell us. Don't tell us anything you don't want to tell us. But uh, hopefully it's coming along well and uh, really looking forward to the third channel. Okay, let's get into this a little bit. Before I start to make my ranking, yes, I've, I want to just say this. I don't really want to include my film. <laughs> I don't really want to include my film in this ranking. It almost seems a little bit wrong because I, I'm obviously I'm going to be able to be a, at least a little bit biased because I wrote and directed the damn thing. Um, at the same time, I, I, I got, you know, I'm trying to look at, at it as objectively as I can and look at, I'm going to give little rankings to, uh, like, no, no ratings, I should say, um, ra- like a, out of 10 rating for each one of these two. I think, I think, I think personally myself, you can put this movie amongst all the other films. A lot of it because a lot of the other films are really that bad. In my opinion, uh, in my opinion, a lot of the films in the TCM franchise are quite bad. And I, I don't think the Sawyer Massacre would be at the bottom. I don't know. It, it'd probably be, it'd be at the bottoms of some people's list. I don't know. Depends on what you. It really depends on what you look for. But you know, we made a film for thirty grand and. You know, it was lower than any any Texas chain, less money than any Texas Chainsaw Massacre was ever made, even the original. But the original is obviously the, the best one, at least in my eyes. I know some people will disagree with that, but you know, uh, I don't really like to. I didn't want to do this, but a few people have asked me. So they haven't asked me to do this, but they've said, "Hey, where would you rank it amongst the other films?" And I had to think about that. Um. <clears throat> Because you know when you when you think about it, you don't really know at first, you know. You, and I try to not be too biased, and I try to just look at it as a film, and uh, you know, look at it for its highlights and its flaws, and and uh, it definitely has both. It definitely has both. And uh, hey, there's our buddy uh, Aaron, Aaron King Dime Zach. How you doing, Aaron? Glad you can make it tonight. Um. So yeah, I'm, it'll be ranked in there. Um. It's definitely not at the bottom for me. Uh, again, you know, share your rankings too. Where would you put the Sawyer Massacre amongst the whole franchise? And, uh, you know, you're not going to offend me if you put it at the bottom, just so you know. Uh, you won't offend me because, it again, it was a movie made for really cheap. Cheaper than any other film in the franchise. By far. By far. I mean, it's I guess it's not that far from the original, but it's far. Still quite a ways, especially when you consider inflation. Um, I can never actually find the exact number the original was made. I see some things say it was made for 80 grand. Others say it was made for like 120. No matter what, that's low. It's really, really low. But even for that time, that's really low. Just so you know, it's really low. Uh, Bad rhyme, right? That was really bad. Uh, but uh but anyways i mean uh i think but i still think it has has some merits 
it's funny. I've said this before. My criticisms of the Sawyer Massacre seem to be quite different from a lot of other people's criticisms of the movie. And that's okay. There are, uh, for the most part, I, when I, I'm seeing valid criticisms. You know, I've heard the chainsaw's not on. I've heard the damn rims on the car. A million, you know, I hear those things all the time. And that's fine. If, if those things really bother you that much, you know, maybe a little bit they bother me. But, you know, again, I, it's because I know how the movie was made. <laughs> You know, I know every little detail on why this happened. And, you know, I never, obviously, I never intended to have a car with new rims. Or I never intended for the chainsaw to not be on for pretty much, for pretty much the whole movie, I think. Again, I still think there might be one shot where it's on. Might be. But, uh, because I know we did have it on. That was a working chainsaw. Uh, but, and that was another obstacle I had. It was finding a working chainsaw from that era. And I feel it feels so stupid that we had a working chainsaw from that area and we like couldn't really use it because it was just so dangerous. We couldn't really have it on because of how dangerous it was. It was just so... It was very unpredictable. Uh, but I, again, I do think we had it on for at least one shot um, in the film that made Final Cut. But who knows? Those chainsaws are, what does it say, heat? <laughs> I can't even read because there's a heart button in my way. Why has I got this stupid heart button in my way? I can't even read your comment right now, Jared, but yeah. Heap 2 or heavy 2? I think it says heavy. Okay, it says heavy. I'm sure it does. Yeah, that was a heavy one. It was heavy. It was super loud. You, you, I guarantee you the, sh the chainsaw was never on inside indoors, which was the majority of the movie was inside. There's a few scenes where where the chainsaw is on outside, but I think the majority of the chainsaw being on was actually inside the house. So none of those scenes, especially in the basement, the the echoing we had in the basement and stuff like that would have destroyed destroyed our ears. Just wouldn't never never would have happened. Uh, but you know, uh, you know the the criticisms are valid. It always depends on you know where you sit with those criticisms. You know. Um, so I, I mean, some of them I, I can agree with, I mean, I agree with all the criticisms. I just, uh, you know, I just, some of them don't make that, don't hit me that hard. I guess you would say they wouldn't hit me that hard when watching a real movie. Um, like, well, not a real movie, a movie, <laughs> any movie, <laughs> any movie. Sawyer Massacre is a real movie. Damn it. And there's our good buddy, Joe More Sense Designs. We ha we've had we've been showing you, we've been putting your logo at the beginning of every live stream just so you know. Uh, lately, we have been we've been doing that. Uh, More sense design designs all of our stuff. Design those wonderful logos you saw of Michelle's for the third channel. Designed all all the stuff I've got for the, the both the Sawyer Massacre and Unseen. So um, yeah, and by the way, I don't even think I've mentioned. We got the link to Unseen in the bio. Uh, go support. Go support today. We want to hit 50% by tomorrow. We are only 60 Canuck bucks away from hitting that. Hey, and there's a cast member in our chat right now, Jamie Hill. Jamie Hill, star of Skinamarink. Can we say star? I don't know if we can say star. And there's Destry Webster. Uh, but, yeah, Jamie Hill is in our cast as well, uh, playing the lead's mom. So that's pretty cool. And uh, she was in Skinamarink. I love Skinamarink. I loved it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Some people like it. A lot of people, actually, a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. But I love it, Jamie. You are awesome. And Destry Webster is one of our executive producers. So thank you for tuning in, Destry. Uh, his name is going to, he got the name perk today. He got that new perk we dropped today. We only got one left. Unless somebody's gotten it, I should check to make sure. If somebody else gets it, we've hit our goal of 50%. Not our goal goal, but our, our uh, I'm calling it my, I'm going to call it our one week goal. I wanted, I wanted one week to be 50% funded. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Just 60 bucks. And if we, we launched on, on 2 p.m. at 2 p.m. last Friday. And so if we can hit it 2 p.m. tomorrow on Friday before before 2 p.m pacific time that is because i'm west coast 
Um, so it'd be 5 p.m. Eastern. If we can hit that uh, before 2 p.m., I think we can hit it tonight. If we can hit it during this live stream, even better. Even better. Let's do it. Who says we can't? It's only $60. 60 bucks. 60 bucks. And we're doing a giveaway tonight. For anybody who's c contributed to the campaigns so far, I know, so when I say campaigns, we're talking this campaign that we're running right now and the previous Unseen Indiegogo campaign. We're going to do something kind of cool. And there's our buddy Mario from Degree Centigrade. Thank you for joining as well, Mario. Good afternoon, sir. Well, evening, afternoon. You can call it afternoon, I guess. <laughs> it's all good. Good to see you guys in the chat. Okay. Let's get to my ranking before I ramble on too much. I'll ramble on all night about this and that and that and this. And again, once again, if you haven't hit that like button yet, please do. Or dislike button if you absolutely hate the rambling that you get from me every time I do this show about this and that and that and this and repeating myself and all the stuff you guys probably driving you nuts. Uh, you can hit that dislike button if you want to. Hey, another cast member in the house, in the house, Bill D. Russell. Sup, he says. <laughs> Had a good chat with you on your on your uh, Instagram the other day. It was awesome. Okay. Hit that like button, dislike button, whatever. I don't care. Uh, whichever one. I know you don't get to see the dislike button, but but uh, hit it anyways because it helps the algorithm. <laughs> and subscribe if you want. I don't know, you know, subscribers are okay, but it's the likes and dislikes that uh, help. And do it to our... Uh, hit the like or dislike to our Indiegogo teaser for Unseen. I want more people to see that. So we want to hit that algorithm. I think I think the link is in the, the description for this too. And if it's not, maybe somebody can drop it in the chat. Uh, maybe even I can drop it in the chat if nobody does. I might do that. Uh, just the more, again, the more people that are commenting and like and all that kind of stuff, it's just going to help the algorithm. I, I want more people to see it. It's had great response. It's just... We're not getting quite the numbers. We just broke a thousand just a couple days ago. A thousand views on it, and you know, uh, it's it's very different from <laughs> from Sawyer Massacre. You know, it's it's very strange. You know, I drop a promotional teaser for the Sawyer Massacre, and it's like sixteen thousand views by now. You know, it'd be it'd be over ten thousand views by now for sure, right? Whereas this is a is not a fan film. It's a, an original property, and it's like wow. Took me that long to hit a thousand views, nearly three months, you know. But hey, hey, it's all good. A thousand views is a thousand views, you know. <laughs> and the fact that everything has been positive, I, I we still don't have a single dislike on it, which is pretty cool. I mean, you you can dislike it if you want to, though, because it's again it helps the algorithm. <laughs> Anyways, rambling too much. Okay, so I'm going to do my ranking a little differently than I've done in the past. How I'm going to do it tonight. Hey, there's a buddy, uh, Carlos from Lazy Reviewer. Hey, Carlos, how are you doing? Uh, how we're going to do it tonight is I'm going to go down the list from the order of when the films were, were released. And I'm going to give you my ranking and rating. Simply that. I might say a little bit on each film. Because uh, I want to get to the giveaways uh, that I'm going to do later. I don't want to spend all night doing this ranking. There's 10 films that I'm ranking here. So it won't, it will take a bit. It will take a bit. Okay. So without further ado, now that you guys are all in the chat and chatting amongst yourself and all that kind of wonderful stuff, uh, let's start this off. Okay. So the very first movie, of course, is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre that came out in 1974, filmed in 73, takes place in 73. What a classic. I don't think that it, I, I mean, <laughs> I I don't think you guys are going to have a hard time knowing where I place this one, where I rank it. Um, what I rate this one even would probably uh, not come to a huge surprise. It's number one, right? It is obviously number one. You guys knew that going into this, that uh, the original is my favorite. It's my favorite horror film of all time. It's number one. Uh, as far as a rating goes, I don't like to give tens. Because 10 implies perfect and nothing is perfect. So, I mean, obviously, if I'm rounding up, it would it would get to a 10. If I'm rounding up, but if, you know, if I want to, probably a 9.5 is where 
it would be 9.5, 9.6, somewhere in there. And if you're rounding up, you know, it would be 10. Rounding up from 9, it would be 10. Uh, if that's the way you're doing it. But, you know, it's in there. I'll, I'll give it a 9. We'll just say 9.5 just to uh, give it what I would call a pretty pretty damn good rating. I don't give... I would don't... Uh, I don't give 9.5s to many films, you know. <laughs> um, you know, would even all the top 10 films I've, of, of all time for me be 9.5? Maybe, maybe, but I don't know. That's a, It's a 9.5 for sure. Okay, so that's pretty, I mean, it's, it's, it's my favorite movie, my favorite horror film. Not my favorite movie of all time, my favorite horror film of all time. I'm not just a horror lover. I love horror, but I love all movies. Yeah. All right. Moving along. See, that was quick. See how fast I'm going to move through these. Uh, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, yeah, this is a tough, this was a tough one. And, you know, on a different, you know, this one could be in a couple different spots for me. I know I have ranked these movies before and it might have been in, in a different spot. I don't know. Um, probably was because now I've got Sawyer Massacre in there. Um, hey, there's John Evans from Behind the Fiends. Hey, John, glad you can make it, man. Glad you can make it. And again, you guys in the chat, you feel free to drop your rankings. I, I don't care if you have the Sawyer Massacre at the bottom. You're not going to offend me, okay? And if you guys in the chat, if you have, feel free to drop your rankings of all, all 10 of these films. There's 10. There's nine official films, and mine is a fan film, but, you know, Let's 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 see what you guys would rank it. Um, you won't offend me if it's at the bottom or near the bottom. Uh, it's it's not going to be at the bottom for for me because I made it. But you know, I could see why people would put it at the bottom. So, um, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two, ooh. I'm putting it at the fourth position. It could be fifth, depending on my mood. Could even be sixth. But right now, I'm going to put it at the fourth, in the fourth spot. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where, I don't remember where I ranked it uh, when uh, I did my last ranking on, on this show, which would have been probably nearly two years ago now. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I don't know. If it, well, yeah, I don't, I don't remember where I would have ranked it then. Uh, would have been four then, maybe. Uh, it could have even been three. I don't know. It, it it's a movie that has its fans. I'll say that. I don't like it though. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, I I know why a lot of people like this movie. I just it's so far removed from the original movie that it's just it. It was this very strange direction to take it. Leatherface feels very goofy in this movie. Leatherface feels feels goofy in a lot of movies. Let's let's be honest. You know, <laughs> oh, John, you're too nice. You're too nice. Ah, <laughs> oh, too, too nice, sir. Yeah, it's too black comedy. And, you know, I like a black comedy, but you know what? You know why I still don't like it? Because I do like black comedy. I don't find it funny. I never found any of it really funny. So, you know, horror comedies, I like a lot of them, but I didn't find this movie very funny. The comedy didn't land for me. And it still doesn't after all. The, it never landed for me. So I didn't care for Chop Top. He was just cartoony for me. And, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of flack for that over the years. I've, you know, when I was raising money for the Sawyer Massacre, there was a lot of, you know, online trolls, especially when I was going on, uh, uh, what's it, uh, Reddit. Early when I, was, when I was promoting Sawyer Massacre early, somebody told me to promote it on Reddit. And holy crap, did the trolls come out on there. <laughs> I'll say that. And a lot of them were like, there's no chop top in this, so I don't give it, I don't really care. I'm like, well, okay, then it's not, not going to be for you. And the Sawyer Massacre, yeah, ignores chop top. Um, I just didn't care for chop top, you know? I can understand why people like him. I like Bill Mosley as an actor. Um, I don't like a lot of the movies he's in, mind you, but, uh, and he did the role well for what it was. I just don't like the role, I think. I just don't like the character. So... Anyways, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a very, to me, it was just a very odd way to make a sequel. But 
it's the way they did it. So, uh, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, maybe the most forgettable movie in the franchise for me. I, I know a lot of people like this one, but man, it's just, I, and there's even some, some reflections in the Sawyer Massacre 2, uh, Leatherface. Um, there's some good things about it, but man, oh man, I just get so bored watching it. I can't, I can't keep my eyes open watching it. I just find it, there's just so much of that movie drags and so much of it is very dark and you can't see much of what's going on. I don't know. Um, I'm putting it in the seventh spot, which I know is very low. Oh, and I didn't give a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 a rating. Sorry, I'll go back and do that before I move on. I know I've already I've already said I'm putting putting Leatherface in spot seven, but uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, I'll give it a three point five out of ten. I really don't like it. Maybe even a three. Uh, well, I'll say three point five. I'll give it a three point five. I don't know. Um, even though I put it in the fourth spot, you know if. If that's your fourth favorite and you give it a 3.5, uh, you're probably not going to like a lot of these movies. And I, I, that's a truth, guys. I don't I don't like a lot of the movies in the franchise. And maybe I'm a little hard on them because they don't come close to what the original does. They really don't. Um, so maybe that's why I'm, I might be a little bit harsh on them. Um, but it is what it is. I have to, I got to give my honest feedback and it's just, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like it, but moving on to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. There we go. I was supposed to do that. And I forgot what I was doing. Uh, Leatherface looked like a zombie in part three. There you go. There's the picture. There you go. <laughs> you are right. I think Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 probably makes a better zombie than a lot of modern zombies do in zombie films these days. Because, I don't know, I, a lot of the zombies I've seen in movies these days don't look very intimidating. Mind you, I'm not a zombie guy, so I'll just leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, I, I I would probably put it in the seventh spot. It, you know, on, on another day it might be in the, in the sixth sixth spot. Can't speak properly. Sorry, guys. But yeah, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, yeah, and a rating on it, man. And people have people fan like this movie. There are I I can't believe I have met so many people that like the movie. Um, there are, there are good elements too, and it's it's so hard to give the all these movies ratings. I don't know, man. Probably a three out of ten. And that's me being generous. A three to ten. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it made no sense how he survived. I know Ken for <laughs> Oh man, there's a lot that I don't know. There's a lot in these movies that uh, aren't for me, but that's okay. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: Next Generation. Well, we're just getting worse, aren't we? <laughs> that's the next movie. In the franchise. Uh, there we go. Leatherface in drag. And, you know, I get the the idea. I, I think there's elements of this concept with Leatherface that are great. It is the only other film in the franchise where Leatherface is kind of changing masks, masks to take on a different personality. Which is something I'm... I've always been a fan of the, uh, but him dressing in drag and like going full out in all the outfits, you know, primarily female outfits, you know, um, it, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Leatherface was, was so annoying in this movie. So annoying. Like I want Leatherface to be scary, scary, not annoying, not goofy. He, he, he could like, he was scary in that original film. You know, so where do I rank next generation? I actually rank it eighth. I'm pretty solid on this eighth and eight, uh Clifton says next generation is the worst. I do disagree. 
do disagree. I do hate this movie, but you know what? There's a little glimmer of light in this movie with Matthew McConaughey, and that's why I'll, I'll at least give it an eight. Give, put it at the eight spot. Uh, it's two and a half out of ten. 2.5 out of 10, though. It's a bad movie. It's a bad, bad, bad movie. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> uh, I believe it was shot in Texas, though, at least. Uh, I don't know if it was 100% shot in Texas, but... Because, uh, um, again, this is Hollywood. You know, yeah, they'll do their principal photography in Texas, but then all the second unit stuff is going to be in Hollywood. It's going to be in L.A. or whatever. Uh, so I don't think it's 100% shot. I think the only one that was 100% shot in Texas was the original. I'm pretty sure. And the Sawyer Massacre. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only the only two that were indie films, you know, uh, were uh, sh shot 100% in Texas. But, yeah, because, I mean, it, I think it was mostly shot in Texas again. But and the same with the remake. And we're going to get to that one next. Um but yeah, they still do uh, reshoots and second unit stuff. Second unit stuff in L.A. or wherever. Um, so, yeah. And I, I actually, yeah. Did, did anybody say that? Uh, nobody say that, said that. But uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three Leatherface was wasn't shot at all in in Texas. They decided to go. I believe that was all California. The whole movie was California, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if it was L.A., but I know it was pretty sure it's California. But anyways, uh, if you take Leatherface out of Next Generation, it's just a good movie. But yeah, not you don't want to take Leatherface out of it, but you almost kind of have to in that one. <laughs> but yeah, Matthew McC McConaughey was, was pretty good. So um, he kind of brings it up a little bit. And, you know, it's at least didn't drag like the third one did. The third one just drags for me. I can't watch it. I find it unwatchable. Uh, but all, I find all a lot of these unwatchable, though, too. So, anyways, yeah, I give it a, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 10. There you go. Uh, moving on, moving on. Now we get into uh, the remake. The remake from 2003. There you go. That chainsaw was not from 1973, by the way. Um so if, if anybody's criticizing me for authentic time period stuff, holy crap. Uh, man, this is a very polarizing film for me because, you know, people talk, people complain about my time period in my film. I'm like, there's a few time period things in my film. The, the rims on the truck, the shoes on the girl, you know, I mean, the costumes could have been a little bit more more had more pizzazz it that that really said 1960s sure it's a budget film this movie ha this movie had a real budget and some of the the costume choices in this film really didn't suit 1973 um the chainsaw was from the 90s i believe it was 90s i'll have to look up that model again but i believe it was came out in the 90s so it's a cool chainsaw don't get me wrong but it is not time period accurate <laughs> You know, ours was. Sure, it wasn't running the whole time, but it was time period accurate. Um, getting crappy lighting right now. That's bummer. The way the sun is setting. What can you do? It is what it is. Sorry about the lighting, guys. I should just, ah, whatever. You guys don't care. <laughs> the sun will set soon and I'll look better. Um, but yeah, the remake uh, from 2003. I actually, I'm going to give, I'm, I know, I know, there's, P, hey, there's Peter Anthony. I know you guys are probably wondering, oh, after I say this, where the, where my movie's going to place, but uh, I'm going to give, I'm still going to give this a, the second spot, even though I have my, ma I have some major issues with it. Uh, I rewatched it again. There is some very awesome stuff in the remake, some very awesome stuff. Um, it, I, I almost feel like, man, it's just too bad. This, I feel like the movie was kind of a wasted opportunity because there's so much good in it. And if they would have not done these bad things in it, it would have been awesome. It could have been awesome. It could have been. Congrats on the quick success on campaign two. Thanks, Peter. Thanks. Uh, we've got a good start. I still want to hit that 50% mark by tomorrow, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're only 60 bucks 60 bucks away so i'm sure we'll hit it it's just you know me i got i gotta push it <laughs> i gotta push it um yeah that would be a pretty good achievement for me to to be 50 percent funded after only a week i don't think i've ever done it before mind you my goal is a lot lower than <laughs> i've set and i think it's 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 definitely the lowest goal i've set on indiegogo so uh so that that means there should be no excuse we should hit this goal Anyways, back to this. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. I know it's in the second spot, and I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Um, I would like to give it higher. I keep going back and wanting to give it higher, but there's, there's certain things in this movie that just they bother me so much, you know. Uh, there's, there's a lot. Uh, Arlie Ermey is so amazing in this movie. It's like, I want to give it higher just because of him. And I almost do give it higher just because of him. Because uh, he is so fantastic in the remake. Uh, and he, you know what? He's, he's good in the beginning too. Unfortunately, the character was written very poorly in the in the beginning. And I feel like it suffers a little bit. Whereas he was well written in the, in the, in the 2003 remake. Uh, but the beginning, not so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a... It's, uh, I give it a five out of ten. Still, I won't get too much into it. I, I mean, I have. If you really want to know my deep, deep thoughts on this movie and what where it goes wrong for me, uh, I believe it's episode ten of Merlo's Movie Massacre. Look for another, uh, episode ten. I went into an in in depth dis discussion on it, on uh, on mo what I what really bothers me about it. There's a lot. There's quite a few things. There is quite a few things, and it sucks because. The things that it does well, it does really well. And it's like I want to give it a higher mark. But anyways, tried sharing the, the link, but uh, YouTube took it away. What? The uh, the Indiegogo link or the, uh, the trailer link? I'm going to share the trailer. I'm going to share the trailer, if I can find it, that is. I know things have been kind of weird lately with... Uh, YouTube and Facebook. I can't share links on anything anymore. It's like weird. But I bet I can if I do it. I'm going to share the link. Damn it. You guys watch watch our trailer. And then you click the link, in, link inside the trailer to get to our Indiegogo campaign and, and get get us that 60 Canuck bucks more so that we hit that 50% mark. I know you guys I know you guys want to support. I know you do. Uh, it's it's like one I, we're like a Blu-ray away something like that. Well, with the shipping, a Blu-ray or a VHS. I think a VHS. <laughs> Somebody order a VHS and then we've hit our goal. Let me see here. See if I can do it. Paste. There we go. I pasted the link to the trailer in the description, so you guys can see it. Now let me get back here if it lets me. I just want to go back ah, so I can see everything properly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. How about that? There we go. I can see everything now. Perfect. It, it did work. Great. Just got to make sure. Okay, okay. So, yeah, 5 out of 10. Let's go to the beginning. It's another one. These ones in the middle vary for me. You know, on one day, this one might be lower. This one might be higher. Who knows? Um, but I've got to put it five in the fifth spot. Uh, could be the sixth spot, depending on how I feel. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, you know, it's... I don't love it. It has some potential. It's very, very heavy-handed. I think that's what I really don't like about uh, the beginning is it's... It's really putting stuff in your face with uh, the gore and the, you know the the pervertness of the uh, uh, of uh, the sheriff character played who played well by Arlie Ermey, but it's just too over the top. It made it he was more goofy in this one. Uh, the cannibalism aspect it's almost like they're saying we forgot about cannibalism in the remake, so let's really lay it on in this movie. Um, <sighs> And I keep saying you don't, you don't, you didn't need the cannibalism 
in the remake. You needed something else. It's okay to imply that it's there, but uh, you don't need to. But uh, I don't know. Uh, very, very heavy-handed. And I think that's where it kind of it lacks for me. Too much gore. It just, you know, it, it kind of, it's about, oh, okay, we got it. We have to show why this guy lost his legs. We have to show how the, the sheriff lost his teeth. I didn't, I didn't need to see that. We don't, those, I don't care. I don't care about those things. <laughs> so that's why it loses a lot. That, so that's why I got it in the fifth, maybe sometimes sixth spot. Uh, and that's, uh, I if I was to rank this movie... Yeah, three point five to four out of ten, somewhere in there. Brett, is that Brett Wagner? Hey, is that another cast member, Brett Wagner? We we're just talking about your film, uh, <laughs> the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just a while, just before, before talking about the re the not the re the beginning, that's what we're talking about right now. Did I even show a picture? Now this is not Brett, right? This is this is not you. You never got to hold the chainsaw. Uh, that would be Brunarski. What's his name? Um, but yeah, but yeah, we're talking about this movie. Ah, there we go, Leatherface. There again, and uh, that's also Bernarski. Uh, I kind of like the mask a little bit more than I like the mask in the remake. Um, the main mask that is. I, I like this mask over the main mask in the remake, but I still don't love it. Eh? I I don't like. You know what I don't like is all the stitching through it. Because I, you know, you know, I don't like the stitching through the, through the mask like that. Is it takes away the, the uh, the the facial features, uh, and I think I think what makes the even the original mask scary, like the killing mask, even is that you can see those facial features, and it's almost like you're seeing the expression of the victim before he before he died. I think that's why I don't like the stitching through the face. Uh, it just uh, it kind of ruins something for me. Personal opinion, of course. Personal opinion. Um, but yeah, um, there you go. I don't know if that's Brett Wagner. I, this, I know a few people named Brett, so could be Brett man from Good Real Hunting. I don't know <laughs> who we showed earlier in that picture, but, uh, Brett, good to see you who, whichever one you are. Yeah. Uh, so I said, yeah, beginning three and a half to four out of 10. I am hard on these movies, guys. I am so hard on these movies. <laughs> Boy, am I hard on the next one. Boy, am I hard on the next one. Next one is, where are we here? Yeah, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Yeah, I like Bill Mosley. Don't like the movies he's in. Uh, we met, talked about that earlier. Um, I do. I, I think Bill Mosley is a fine. I mean, I don't go crazy over Bill Mosley or anything like that, but he's not somebody I, you know, I... I don't think I don't know if he would ever win an Oscar or anything like that. He's not somebody I oh Bill Mosley's in this movie, I have to see it. But I like him. I think he's a good actor. Uh just not a fan of his movies. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. Uh he's in a lot of movies I don't like. He's in some movies I like too, but not many. Uh which movie did Leatherface take his mask off? I think it was the two thousand yes. It was the 2003. He took his mask off. That was another thing I didn't really like about that movie. Him, you know, taking his mask off and you seeing his face. It, it feels a little anticlimactic. It it feels like that scene is really just there to show his face, and you don't need to. It's it's kind of, you know, oh, he's got something wrong with his face. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of my issues with the movie. That's for sure. There's again, I have a lot of issues with that movie, and I I went into pretty pretty good detail on episode ten of this show, Merlo's Movie Massacre. If you want to see it, it's uh, it's on it's on the YouTube channel, and then you can kind of get a understanding. I'm not saying you have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. Don't agree with me because I, I know a lot of people love the remake. A lot of people will hold the remake higher than any other film in the franchise, even the original. And, uh, you know, I, I have no problem with that. I understand why people like it. And there is a lot of great stuff about it. There's a lot of fantastic stuff about the remake. Um, Brett Wagner being one of them, if that is Brett, <laughs> Brett in the chat. Uh, Brett, Brett's kill. Actually, though, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, I do prefer Brett's moment in the film 
that kill pretty much more than any other Leatherface moment in that film. Uh, other than the Kemper, him wearing wearing the Kemper space, you know, him making the Kemper space seemed like it was just there to show his his actual face, but. Um, you know, him, you know, the girl, the main girl seeing her boyfriend's face on Leatherface. That was a good moment. I kind of wish that he wore the mo that face for the rest of the movie. I think it would have been much more terrifying, but but that's okay. I think it's a much more disturbing mask than the other mask he wears in the film, personally. Again, the stitching in the face, you know, you, that there's no stitching in that face. You can just see the expression and everything. It's its terrifying. To me, that's terrifying. Um, personal opinion, though, guys. Remember that. Personal opinion. Uh, I know a lot, a lot of people love love the stitching through the, the mask. So uh, a lot of people don't like the masks in the Sawyer mask. It's, uh, it's hit or miss. Some people love them. Some people hate them. So it is what it is. I know a lot of people hate that saying. I even kind of hate that saying, but yet I still say it a lot. Anyways, <laughs> moving along. Texas Chainsaw 3D, we were talking about that. Uh, dumpster Fire. It's, it is it is by far the worst in the franchise for, for me. I can't stand Texas Chainsaw 3D. I remember seeing it in the theaters. Uh, I And I remember getting out of the theaters feeling dirty for spending money on that movie. I'm just gonna say it. it's it's a it's a terrible terrible film, one out of ten, uh, one, maybe one point five if I'm being nice. I'll give it one point five. Um, just just you know what? Why I'll give it a one point five? I, I actually kind of liked Dan Yeager's performance of, as Leatherface. That's why I'll give it a one point five. I actually like he might he might have in my opinion given the actual best performance of Leatherface since Gunner. Now, his body type didn't work well for Leatherface. I'll say that. He was too skinny. Very tall. It was okay. The, the tallness is good, but but uh, the, he for, for his height, he you know, that he he looked uh he looked skinny. Not like skinny skinny, but he didn't look big enough to be Leatherface. Um but as far as like getting the mannerisms and stuff like that down, I bought his his leather face more so than probably any other leather face. Just saying. Um, yeah, that's the only reason why I'd give it one point five. But the plot the plot holes in that movie, ooh. Uh And I'm not even talking about the time period. The everybody complains about the time period accuracies. Eh. I don't really care that much about the time period ac accuracies. It's the plot holes, the bad acting. There was some bad acting in that movie. Whew. Some of the worst, man. Uh, there was some bad acting in that movie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was just waiting for Trey Songs to say, Mofo go chainsaw. Mofo got a chainsaw. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I'm rambling a bit, but that's okay. Um, next one. That's that's the worst uh, though. That's that's uh, bottom of the barrel for me. And I know a lot of people would would put uh, next generation there. I won't, and uh, I'll even put next generation higher than this guy. Or sorry, wrong one. Ah, yeah, this one. This one. Leatherface from 2017. I'm just gonna say this right off the bat while we're on this photo. That is not Leatherface. That is not Leatherface. Millennium Films did the impossible for me with, with their movies. They didn't just make one movie worse than Next Generation. They made two. Um, I I hate it. I hate it. Uh, some people will actually even put this at the bottom of the barrel. It's second to bottom for me, just because I really hated Texas Chainsaw 3D. But <laughs> that is not Leatherface. Um, and I refuse to ever believe that that is Leatherface. Um Ah, 
I get what they're trying to do. But really? <laughs> he, uh, Jared says it should have been the bigger guy as Leatherface. And yes, in a, in the sense that he looks and, and feels like Leatherface, yes. But doing what they're trying to do and, and create some sort of a twist, I know why they did that. However, at the same time, he's the last person that, well, I mean, I guess the, the, the girl that was amongst the group maybe is the, the last person. But still, um, yes, he, the big guy it would be considered too obvious. Um, so if you're going for the twist, that won't work. You could have gone with the other. There's that the, the crazy tall guy. Hey. At least he's got the height, more or less, to be Leatherface. He's skinny, but any I I will believe that a skinny guy can get heavy rather than a short guy under six feet tall, uh, like well under six feet. He's like five seven or something like that. It was five seven, five eight, somewhere in there. He I don't I don't believe a grown man is going to grow an entire foot. You can't convince me that's Leatherface. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. That is not Le- It's not. It's not. I don't, and and it was it was it, it was so obvious too. To me it was obvious because the the story was centering around him. It didn't really make sense though. No. 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 Sorry, guys. I just <laughs> I remember being so bummed because you know what? Uh, and I probably have said this on the show before whenever I've talked about this movie. When I saw the first trailer that came out, there was a red band trailer that came out. I thought to myself, "Ooh, this actually doesn't look like it'll be bad. This kind of looks like it could be scary. The red band trailer made it look like it could be scary. The only part of that red band trailer I didn't like was him giving him the chainsaw for his birthday. I thought that was kind of, that was a little goofy. But everything else in that, but again, it's just teaser. It's just, you know, a lot of creepy shots, you know. It wasn't really building a story. And so when the second trailer came out that was more more of an actual trailer rather than a teaser that was giving some story, and you know, um, I was kind of like, okay, it's not good. It's not good. So it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. Not that good guys. Um, as far as the rating on this one, I, I'm talking about these more than I planned on it. Um, yeah. Leatherface. Okay. Maybe I'll give it a two out of 10. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. If I'm rounding up, <laughs> uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, another one that could be interchangeable in its position, sort of middle of the pack. Um, I liked aspects of it. I thought some aspects of it were really bad. It was at least an easy movie to watch. It was a movie where you can turn your brain off and just watch Leatherface and kind of laugh at the, the stuff. Uh, kind of like what I wanted to do with what I, what I thought was going to happen with uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D, but it was just so stupid that I just couldn't. So, um, with with this movie, um, I was I kind of got more out of got what out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 what I thought I was going to get from Texas Chainsaw 3D, and for that alone, I do hold it a little higher. Uh, Bulgaria Chainsaw Massacre, the TCM spoof. Exactly. But there's a lot of bad things in it, too. Uh, Leatherface is superhuman in this movie, and it doesn't make sense. Seven-year-old superhuman Leatherface. Um, yeah. Not very good characters. The acting is meh. And as, you know, you don't expect the best acting in, in these movies. Um, but, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give it a four out of ten, probably. It's, uh, it's six. I ranked it six. Uh, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Yeah, I'll give it a 4. Bulgaria Chainsaw, <laughs> the TCM spoof. <laughs> That's like that. <laughs> uh, it's not great, though. It's not a good movie. Um, I don't like it enough to put it higher than that. 
it was obviously shot in Bulgarian, as uh, as uh, John points out. It it was pretty clear it was not shot in Texas. Uh, yeah, I mean, they of course they announced that it's being shot in Bulgaria, but um, yeah. But I can have fun with it. It's one I might rewatch it one, at one point. But uh, there was a lot of uh, there was there was a lot of uh, unbelievable stuff, I guess you would say. Suspend your disbelief to the extreme. To the extreme, definitely. Uh, really short movie. Yeah, it was pretty. It was. I think that helps, though. I think the fact that it was short can kind of help you kind of forget a lot of the. They whip. There was so many bad stuff happening. All in a row, it's like what you know, something really bad would happen, but then another thing bad would happen, and then another thing bad would happen, and you'd almost forget about each one as they went along. So, yeah, I don't love it, that's for sure, but yeah, I got around six. It's so it's about a four out of ten, and uh, finally, our film, The Sawyer Massacre. Uh, I am biased because I I made the movie, um, but yeah, I I placed it in third spot. I placed it in the third stop spot, and it's for me. It's pretty even with uh, the remake, but you know, I give I give the remake a slight edge simply because of this. I think that the remake created some stuff in there that was truly that truly felt like it was that truly felt amazing. I don't know if we really created anything in our movie that felt quite that um uh, that level i guess you could say um there's definitely certain aspects of our film i'd like more than the remake but there's also there's aspects of the remake that i like more so it's really hard to compare the two they're pretty much even they're both around a five and a ten i guess you would say um but i'll give the edge to the remake in that regards Hey, we had less money. I, I do believe this. <laughs> if, if the Sawyer Massacre had more money, I think it would have been a better film. Um, like, there's just there's just so much stuff that, uh, you know, we had to compromise on. And I think that was, uh, that's a factor at the end of the day. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Again, I said that saying again, but <laughs> we, had, we, we made a movie for 30 grand. Uh, I, and you know, if you count all the back paying I did on, 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 on people, which I've tried to back pay people as much as I can, because a lot of people work for free on this movie. So, um, you know, then we're, we're up to maybe with, uh, post-production costs and everything. It's, you know, 35 to 37 grand somewhere in there, uh, that we spend on, not a lot of money to make a movie though, guys, really not. Um, there's a lot of good things about it, but, uh, you know what? I can, I can look at it through a certain lens and say, there's some really choppy stuff with this movie. There is, there was a, there's definitely, it shows that there was a lot of shots I wanted to get that we didn't get. And, uh, I, you know, I have to be able to look at that and say, like, it's like they only filmed, uh, 75% of the scene, you know, it's, it's feel, feels like that through a lot of this, because again, we shot it in nine days, you know, when you shoot it in nine days, uh, that's going to happen. There is acting issues, guys. There is acting issues. I'm not going to deny that there isn't acting issues. Uh, is it because we have bad actors? No, definitely not. It's because we shot the movie in nine days and our actors had one take to, there's not a single perf there's not a single performance in the Sawyer Massacre from an actor that's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly not even Nika, not uh, Les who played Grandpa. They, they were great. They were fantastic, but uh, none of them were exactly what I wanted. To a to a point, they were, did great. Um, but even those real, even the, some of the strongest performances in that movie, there was there's some areas I, I, I can watch and say, ah, oh, should have been more like this, ah, oh, should have been more like this, and that was simply because it was rushed. We didn't have enough time to, to to make the movie properly. You know, if I would have had at least thirty days to shoot this movie, it would have been far better. I think that was sort of that was sort of our Achilles heel was just not enough time, and. Uh, 
so I think it could be better than the remake. I think it could have been better than the remake, but we got the movie we got. And overall, I'm really proud of the film. I still think, man, we made something pretty awesome on a very, very tiny budget. And uh, very proud of this movie. Very proud. <laughs> uh, channeled the spirit of the old G. Thanks, John. You nailed the feel, too, in the Sawyer Massacre. I hope we did. I don't know if I did. Sometimes I'm kind of like, no, we didn't quite get the feel. <laughs> you know? I don't know, but everybody sees it differently. Everybody kind of sees it differently. I, I don't know if I captured quite the feel that I wanted to, but... You know, I mean, I guess in a sense we did because you can kind of tell it's made on a on a very low budget like the original was. So it does still have this kind of gritty feel to it. I think in some cases it's not gritty enough. You know, I've 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 uh examples, you know, that I I do I have heard were that uh um Drayton and the hitchhiker should have looked dirtier, you know, they should have had more sweat and the dirt on their clothes and their Clothes are just too clean and shiny, and we should have dirtied them up a bit. We probably should have. We probably should have. We should have. They sh these are dirty pigs of people in the in the desert heat, and you got to believe that these guys are in the, the desert heat. But it's uh, it wasn't hot at all. It was cold, freezing that day on set. So, uh, but yeah, we could have easily made them dirty, and we we didn't. It was just you know something that kind of. Flipped us by it. But that kind of thing helps add to that grit. It's not all just the camera look and all that kind of stuff. It's it's there's a lot of things that go into it. It's the it's the set design. It's the the costume design. It's it's all all of that. Although I do think our set design was pretty damn good overall. Overall it was pretty damn good. Joey, you sent me some more stuff I see. Awesome. I'll look at that later. Joe is the man. He's been like a machine. Been like a machine. Getting me uh, lots of different promos and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's all the rest you gotta send me. There's still there's still quite a bit I know. So I sorry I keep loading stuff on you, Joe. If you're still in the in the chat. I'm not sure if he is or not. But if you are, hey. There you go. So that's my ranking, guys. Uh share yours in the comments if you want to. And we're going to do a bit of a giveaway. Now, this giveaway is going to be different, too. This giveaway is going to be very unique. Uh, I'm going to ask... Let me see. I think most of you haven't... I'm going to pick somebody from the chat. There's... <laughs> he's here. There you go. Thanks there, Joe. Uh, let's ask Joe. You know what? I'm going to ask Joe. Joe, I want you to pick me... I want you to pick two numbers between 1 and 92. It has to be somebody who hasn't backed the campaign, so that's why I'm picking Joe. Uh, I think some of you have, some of you haven't. I don't think John has yet. I don't think uh, Jared has yet. And you guys might be the only ones left in the chat. We're doing a giveaway. Uh, I don't know if Clifton's still here or not. He did back the campaign. Destry has backed the campaign. Peter's backed the campaign. So if you guys are here, it doesn't matter whether you're here, though. You can be here or you cannot be here. So... Two numbers, two numbers between 1 and 192. Two numbers, Joe, because those are going to determine the winners. Just going to wait, wait on Joe. He's going to give it to me. Going to be back. It just got car repairs dealing with 18. No worries, man. You're, you're just going to, we're just, uh, doing a little bit of a contest. 18 and 69, dude, is what he says. Okay. You sure you want to go with those numbers? You sure? You're picking 18 and 69. You know what? How about this? Since, we, since uh, you know, uh, there's more than one person in the, in the chat that hasn't uh, backed the campaign yet. So how about we pick... You pick one of those two numbers, and Jared... Since uh, John's going, Jared, if you could pick the other number, let's do that. At least so, so, the, so that we mix it up a bit. This way we mix it up a bit. I like to mix things up. <laughs> Call me spontaneous if you want to. But it's cool to mix things up. Uh, 
do okay let's see what we got okay oh now we now we get more john we said that you wouldn't be you said you're gone so <laughs> okay we're gonna go we're gonna go with these two we're gonna go 18 and 50 all right those are the numbers we're going to okay so how this is going to work we're going to find we've got our winners it's number 18 it's number 50. we have to go to our indiegogo campaign and it's going to be the the who placed the order at what at uh in which place basically is how that's going to go 18. uh number 18 is jason cross so jason cross is our first winner awesome he will get his choice of a blu-ray or dvd whichever he chooses and what was the other number 50 it was 50 right so i have to go yeah 50. so jason cross congratulations you won your choice of either a blu-ray or dvd uh i will reach out to you because i'm positive you're not watching this you might be i'll announce it over facebook too uh choice of a blu-ray or dvd Congrats to you. And so the next number was 50. I have to go all the way here. Do, 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 do. Who was number 50? All right, here we go. Number 50 was Teresa Cobb. Teresa Cobb has won herself a blu-ray or dvd as well thank you all for playing well you didn't play it was a <laughs> it was a giveaway for hitting some goals so uh thank you guys both for uh, playing Teresa cobb and jason cross let me write these down so i don't forget have both won their choice of a blu-ray or dvd pretty sweet stuff i'm forgetful I'm old. Well, getting old. Cobb. There we go. Wasn't that fun? Simple but fun. <laughs> I wanted to do a different. We are going to, and just so you got next show that I do, I'm going to do another contest, guys. Uh, and again, you do have to be a backer to enter. It's not going to be a trivia contest this time. Well, not really a trivia contest. It's going to be something a little different. It's going to be something that probably anybody can do. So there you go. It's, so you don't necessarily have to be good at trivia to a point. I don't know. You just have to, if you've watched lots of movies, it might, uh, it might be a cool contest. And I'm going to try to do that episode next week. Uh, episode 78 of Merlo's Movie Massacre. We're going to do a really, really cool contest. Uh, real cool uh, competition and, and give away some cool stuff. Give away something pretty cool for the top prize. And uh, other cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff. So many cool stuff. Yeah. How about that? Uh, <laughs> any questions before uh, I head out for the night? Because uh, we've been on here over an hour. So... Usually I like to keep these around the hour mark, but if you guys have any questions, uh, congratulations, Jason and Teresa. Yes, congratulations. Thank you, Clifton. Clifton. Uh, I got something I'm going to mail you here in the next week or so to use for a giveaway, like a buy a raffle ticket type thing. Oh, awesome. Uh, just so you guys know, and I know people have actually done this on Indiegogo, uh, I'm not doing raffles because it is actually against Indiegogo's rules. So I'm not going to sell raffle tickets on on Indigo. I will sell contest tickets. In fact, that might might be an inter interesting. You can do contests. You can't do raffles because it's gamble. It's a it's a luck of the draw sort of thing. Kind of like what this was, but this wasn't something I was selling on Indiegogo. It was just a free giveaway, right? Giveaways are different. Giveaways are different than contests. Yes. So that's that's a thing. If I'm selling a perk for you to get being a raffle that's against indiegogo's rules it's a fine line i know uh, and i've heard some people say they don't call it a raffle they call it a a, a draw i guess or i've heard the term waffle get used it's it's you'll get entered into the waffle <laughs> okay 
Um, but it's still a raffle. <laughs> Uh, it's high and limited edition Leatherface statue still in the box. You don't have to give me that, man. <laughs> um, but you know, if you want to put it for for uh, some sort of a free giveaway, we can do that. Free raffle. We again, we can raffle that off because it's you know not the same as me doing a raffle. But uh, yeah, he got two. Oh wow, he's got two. So, anyways, if uh, if you back the campaign, you'll be able to uh, get into the next competition. Uh, maybe I'll actually just put the, a perk to be in the cont in a contest again because it's not a raffle or anything like that. It's a it's an actual contest, and uh, yeah, whoever whoever wins will win something pretty big, pretty big. I won't say what, but it'll be it'll be bigger than the prizes that we're giving away tonight. A lot bigger, a lot bigger. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, any other questions before I keep before I head out for the night? Do, 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 do. I don't think we I think we got everything. Uh, that's the one thing about uh, the one thing I like about StreamYard is I get to put people's comments up. Well, they don't get to do that with this. Oh, okay. OBS just kind of went down all of a sudden. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay, there we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'll say I backed the campaign, but I had car prepare. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I, I totally mis misinterpreted what you said. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man. All good, man. All good. Uh, hey, you made that movie for, for more than the price of a pizza. <laughs> I missed all these comments. As a, again, I like StreamYard for that. There's so many things. Uh, your channel, channel. Where did I? I thought there was something. More true to the franchise than some. I'm glad you guys think that. Um, you know, not, ever, not everybody does. but uh, And maybe you guys are just saying that to not hurt my feelings. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, if, uh, you know, some, some people are super bothered by things like the rims on the truck and the chainsaw not running. And I guess uh, to an extent, the fact that so many people are going into this house and they seem... Uh, it seems like everybody's stupid for going into this house. I get that. I get that. And I've talked about these things before. So I won't, I don't need to really address them. I have my reasons for, for that. Uh, obviously the other things, there's nothing I can do about. It was just, it was budget and, and people bailing on me more than anything else. <laughs> That's what you get. You You just never know what you're going to get. Anyways. Uh, did I miss anything else before I go? Uh, I don't think I did. But I like, like you said, that made the movie more than the price of a pizza. Yeah, we won't go into that, though. <laughs> As I am so done with all that stuff, man. I'm so done with all that stuff. <laughs> uh, I went overboard with the gore. Uh, it went overboard with the gore. Laziness is way too... Uh, I think we're talking about the the, la the 22 text chainsaw there. Sorry I, if I ignored you guys' chats a little bit tonight. I apologize. Uh, we had... We had... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I think that's everything we got. Okay. Uh, grandpa had one of the... Oh, sorry. My grandpa had one from the uh, 80s. Nearly lost his leg from that. Chain. Oh, boy. Weighed a ton, too. Whew. I bet. I bet. Anyways, guys. <laughs> I think that's good. Uh, unless anybody has any questions. Questions about Unseen. Unseen is still crowdfunding. We're just, just 60 bucks. Just 60 bucks. And that's Canadian bucks. So that's not much. Five bucks US. No, a little more than that, but still, it's it's not much. So uh, get us there by tomorrow, by 2 p.m. Pacific. If we do, that'll be awesome. That'll be, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be very, very stoked if we can actually hit that six. I mean, I could just throw in 60 bucks or whatever, but I actually, I can't do that because uh, 
one thing I found during one of the, one of the old old uh, Sawyer Massacre campaigns is that campaign owners cannot back their own campaign. How? Oh, who would have thought that? <laughs> but yeah, just sixty bucks away, unseen on Indiegogo. Link is in the description. Uh, go support while you can. Thank you guys all, and have yourselves all a very very good night. <laughs>